So today let's talk about acute coronary syndrome. So what happened in acute coronary syndrome and what it is as its name indicate that it is something related to coronary artery which is supplying blood to the heart muscles. As heart itself is a pumping organ as it provide oxygen to the whole body through blood but for the pumping activity it also need oxygen through the blood supply so what happened that the heart pump blood to itself also just to provide oxygen to its own muscles for the pumping activity syndrome mean set of symptoms associated with a specific health related cause so what happened in this there are three types or three forms of acute coronary syndrome which are unstable angina which we have discussed earlier in our previous video non st segment elevation myocardial infarction or ST segment elevation myocardial infarction so these are three forms of acute coronary syndrome we have already discussed about unstable angina but what happened in non uh, ST segment elevation which is also called as NSTEMI and STEMI and STEMI. Uh, acute coronary syndrome is an emergency condition uh, which is commonly caused be because of the rupture of atherosclerotic plaque or partial or complete thrombosis of the, of the coronary artery. So what happened in this syndrome that there is blockage of the artery which is supplying blood to heart muscles. When there is uh, deficiency of blood supply what happened that there is ischemic condition ischemic condition caused angina which is unstable angina but if thrombosis or embolism that caused the uh, complete blockage of the artery that what will happen that there will be infarction and infarction is something that is very serious and infarction mean that there is necrosis going on on the heart muscles so what happened in acute coronary syndrome that there is formation of atherosclerosis in the in the coronary artery this is the coronary artery and if we magnify or cross section of this artery what will be here that if this is the artery this is the inner layer that is endothelial so what happened in this layer there will be deposition of fat cholesterol proteins calcium and white blood cells so these all are being deposited so this all is called as soft interior of the plaque this all over this soft area there is a hard shell or hard capsule which is present which is called as fibrous cap and it is covering the substances under it and this is hard shell both of these things soft interior and hard shell combine to form a plug and this whole thing is called as plaque formation plaque is not formed at once it takes years and years to form so what happened when there is formation of a plaque in the artery and the plaque ruptures what will happen that there will be partially blockage of the blood supply to the heart muscles and thus there will be uh, ischemic condition which can lead to unstable angina 
so what happened when there is rupture of the plug obviously when there is rupture of the plug there will be exposure of these inner uh, substances present in the plug if we look at the artery like this so if this is the plug it is the heart capsule over plug and these are the substances which include fat cholesterol protein calcium and white blood cells so what happen when there is blood flow as blood is coming towards this plug there will be stress at this area some people think that plug rupture at this point but most of the plug rupture at this point plugs are prone at this point because because here the capsule layer or fibrous cap is much thicker than at the margins so so marginal area of the plug is more prone to rupture now the plug is ruptured and uh, all of the stuff inside it is now exposed to the lumen so all these substances present in the soft interior are actually thrombogenic thrombogenic means that they can initiate or they can facilitate the formation of thrombus so how the formation of thrombus actually occurs on the exposed surface of the plug platelets which are coming from the blood they attack here like if i if i draw it like this so platelet adhere over this exposed area and then these platelets release some platelets aggregation factors which cause the accumulation of other platelets and they cause the aggregation or small mass of platelets over the exposed surface of the plug so after plate aggregation what happen that uh, these all substances release tissue factors so what tissue factors do is that uh, tissue factors do is that they cause the formation of insoluble fibrin from soluble fibrinogen so this tissue factor cause the formation of insoluble fibrin from soluble fibrinogen so if i again draw this diagram what happen over here that there is rupture and now there is attachment of platelets and there is platelet aggregation after platelet aggregation there is formation of fibrin insoluble fibrin so now both of these things which include platelet aggregation and fibrin formation combined are called as thrombus and now thrombus is formed in the coronary artery and what this uh, thrombus can do this can lead to dislodge for example if this is the if artery is being divided into smaller arteries what happen when this uh, thrombus is dislodged it is called as emboli or embolus this embolus can go anywhere in the artery and can cause blockage over there now there is complete blockage over here and when there will be complete blockage over here what will happen that if there is some tissue present over here or some other cells which this uh, artery is providing blood to what happen there will be no further supply of oxygen and thus there will be infarction and what infarction mean that there is necrosis or there is death 
of the cells and when there is death of the cell what it cause is heart attack or what we scientifically or medically ca call it as myocardial infarction thrombus is something that is fixed uh, at its position but uh, when it becomes embola it becomes more dangerous uh, for the patient as it can cause blockage of any other artery which is smaller than the actual one where it formed as i told you earlier that there are three forms of uh, acute coronary syndrome that is unstable angina non stemi or n stemi uh, and stemi so how can you differentiate between these three so first of all we are talking about the difference between myocardial infarction and unstable angina so how can you diagnose or how can you identify that it is myocardial infarction or it is an unstable angina so what happen when there is death of the cells death of a cell will release some biomarkers so biomarkers are something that can you uh, that can help you identify or diagnose a disease when there is death of the cell it releases some substances which are called as troponin troponins and keratin kinase which are important substances in the heart heart cells or myocardial so uh, troponin include i and t troponin and keratin kinase include b and m keratin kinase so <clears throat> these are the types of troponin and keratin kinase so what happen there will be release uh, of these substances into the blood you can detect these substances in the blood and if there is presence of these substances it mean that your heart muscle or cell or some of the cell of the heart has died so this is not a release in the case of angina or in the case of unstable angina uh, when everything is similar but there is no death of the cells in angina there is only ischemic condition being going on but in myocardial infarction there is complete death of the cells and this this necrosis lead to the release of these substances into the blood which can be easily be detected in the uh, lab test <clears throat> so these uh, substances are called as biomarkers which are uh, not available not present in the case of unstable angina we draw a graph to study how it works so after the death of the cells there is increase of the troponin level in the blood up to 48 hours it peaks up to 48 hours after 7 to 8 days it becomes normal to the original level of the troponin in the blood so you can easily detect if there is increase of the uh, troponin level in the blood serum that can indicate that there is myocardial infarction going on or there has myocardial infarction in the patient but in the case of keratin kinase m or b what will happen that it increases up to 24 hours it show its peak and afterwards it show its decline it becomes normalized after 48 hours because of this keratin kinase are helpful in indicating or in diagnosing reinfarction that infarction occur after the previous which occur in 10 percent of the patients so what happen that there is increase of keratin kinase after 48 hours and then it begins to uh, normalize if there is a presence of a reinfarction what happens after 48 hours there is increase of keratin kinase again in the blood serum which indicates second infarction So if we talk about its symptoms what could be its symptoms patient can feel or have chest pain that's a kind of pressure 
on his chest that can lead towards left arm or jaw. Other than this, patient can have diaphoresis. What diaphoresis is? Diaphoresis is actually sweating, but in terms of a symptom, when it is showing something or it is an adverse effect of drug, then we use the term diaphoresis. What can happen next is nausea, fatigue, and of course, dyspnea. There's shortness of breath. Obviously, when he will feel that his heart demand is not being fulfilled by the blood because of the blockage of the artery, then obviously he will feel shortness of breath. So how can you treat this syndrome? Or what can be the therapy for this syndrome? So there are different uh, therapies. First of all, that includes fibrinolytic therapy which means there are some medi medicines which are helpful in in dissolving the, the thing that is blocking the artery aspirin as aspirin is an antiplatelet it includes heparin for example as anticoagulant and it also include nitrates nitrate relax or they act as vasodilator so or they relax the vessel which is being obstructed and the fourth one is beta blockers what beta blockers do is that they slow down the heart rate in this way there will be less oxygen required to the heart and thus there will be less of the cell death. We can also use painkillers to manage pain because it is very extreme uh, kind of pain. For pain management we can give any analgesics. And next one is statins. What statins do at as we know statins are uh, very good drugs which are uh, useful in improving lipid profile so as we already have lipid deposition in our uh, arteries so we use statins for the improvement of our uh, lipid profile so these are some drugs which are actually used in fibrinolytic therapy. What else we can do for the treatment of this syndrome is that angioplasty. Balloon is used to inflate or to open up the artery. This way the blockage is removed from the artery and the blood flow is relieved. And the third thing that we can use for this syndrome is stunt and stunt can be made up of metal or plastic and what it does is that it open up the blocked passage of the blood and in this way it relieve the acute coronary syndrome so this was all about acute coronary syndrome if you have any questions let me know in the comment section below and thank you very much for watching my videos